I'm Nick, and we've developed a vision for future governments, inspired by the conversations we've had here at the World Government Summit. So, the drivers behind the change, both enablers and challenges, are focused on three key areas. First, identity and demographics, with the individual paramount. Second, technology, with robotics, AI, connectivity, and big data, posing tremendous potential, but also big risks. Third, one planet. We must hand the planet to future generations, and we must cherish it. These drivers will change the way government works, how it sets policy, what it does, and how it is organized. So, the intent behind decision making. This will be guided by three considerations, enabled by big data and dynamic evaluation of citizens' values. There will be forward thinking, anticipate change, thinking about future generations. We will see more planning, like the Norwegian Sovereign Wealth Fund, from oil proceeds. There will be global and outward looking, thinking about how decisions affect others. For example, that failure to address climate change means Bangladesh will lose half its productive land by 2080. They will focus on well-being, social support, trust, life expectancy, freedom, generosity, and GDP influence gross national happiness. This will require a fundamental redesign of services around individuals. Design-led thinking will allow citizens to serve themselves in the most effective and efficient ways possible. For example, citizens will carry national ID and become the CEOs of their own healthcare. As we heard in the Future of Healthcare event yesterday, cross-hospital data exchange will save lives. Governments will plan for the future but budgeting will be dynamic. In the words of Prof Nye at Harvard, we should combine the best of markets with the best of government. If government is best at setting agendas and regulating, this is what they should do. In our new vision, we advocate a local devolved and a global central decision-making process. For big strategic issues that affect everyone, power must move to a new national government and away from national governments. For issues where local bespoke services are needed, citizens need empowering. To give examples, education choices will be driven by local economics and requirements. Just as we heard from Elon Musk yesterday, the possibility of life outside Earth needs collaborative exploration. Tax systems currently lead to arbitration opportunities, and we exploit them. And this requires collaboration too. We've seen the development of powerful localities, San Francisco, the biotech hub, Dubai for innovation, London for finance. They compete on a global scale and are increasingly specialized. But when faced with innovation, as the quote says, we should be made to feel uncomfortable. The nation state is the product of orthodoxy and convention. We need to think beyond this to solve the issues of tomorrow. Currently, as you'll see on the left, Nations hold the veto on, for example, the Paris Climate Change Agreement. In our new vision, big macro issues are taken by a global body with empowered citizens making decisions at local levels at whatever hierarchy they choose, be their towns, cities, countries, or regions. By 2050, nations have become stewards of tradition and culture. The national veto that stops progress on global warming that hinders economic development and that threatens the future of the world has no place in 2050. But we realize that this is ambitious. 
So we have one final insight to share with you. Just think for a moment about how civil servants are perceived today. Slow, bureaucratic, reactive. None of this ambitious agenda will ever be realized if civil servants retain this image. You, as the leaders of government today, and you, as the leaders of tomorrow, must never stop investing in people and their ideas to improve our governments. Then, and only then, when public service is universally seen as a worthy mission, will governments be able to solve the universal problems facing humanity. I finished a minute early. Thank you very much for listening.